So I'm so excited to have Ed here this morning. Thank you so much for joining me for the Legacy Life podcast. So today I'm going to be talking about legacy as I always do. So my first question to you is, what do you feel that your legacy is? So for me, it's all about supporting others. I was really lucky that when I was in well, I suppose some of it's luck, some of it's hard work, but I was in a really dark place in 2018 to the point where I didn't really feel like I had anything left to live for. I'd mm-hmm. gone through some pretty harrowing times, domestic abuse wise, come out of that only for my health to fail. So at that time, I wasn't really looking for anything. I'd just about given up. But then through getting my health back on track and being able to be supported by others, I then realised that I was able to support other people and help them. So it was kind of a skill I didn't really realise I had personally. So in my day job, I'm paid to support others, which obviously I chose to go into as a social worker, but never really thought about how I could help anybody outside of social work. So it's really been, well, it's not a nine to five job, as you can probably guess, but when you're not working, you're usually not really supporting others. So for me, it was about being able to help people in a completely different way and help Mm -hmm. people to be able to have a better quality of life without kind of the usual, let's do meditation, let's do yoga. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find a way that helped busy people to have Mm -hmm. a better quality of life. So for me, it was all about supporting others. Then through doing that, I learned that I was actually quite good at other skills like running Facebook groups and things. So I was like, I can help business owners. Mm -hmm. So what I didn't realise that I probably had all of it inside me originally anyway Mm -hmm. was a skill to help other people. So it's all about helping other people and kind of enabling them to help themselves rather than I think too easily we quite often get things done for us or we outsource. Whereas for me, it's about showing people that they have got skills themselves they might need to kind of build on them skills a bit or there might be areas of their life that they can make little tweaks to but it can have such a huge impact on kind of their quality of life and so it's kind of about me helping people to help themselves so that they can help other people to help themselves and kind of that ripple effect yeah rather than it all being me saying and them doing I wanted to try and create that ripple I love that. I love that sense of that ripple effect and enabling, you know, what you're talking about, enabling others to help themselves. Um, Yeah. And it it is this thing of people finding their power or their their superpower, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, and often the... the things that we take for granted that come easily to us, we tend not to value, do we? Yeah, that's so true. You know, we end up sort of assuming, well, everyone can do that. If it comes easily to me, if it comes yep. naturally to me, then surely everyone can do it. But they can't necessarily, you know, and being able to, um, yeah, get get value, pleasure and help others by using a, one of these kind of innate skills, I think, is, is so um, rewarding. Yeah, definitely. But also, I'm I'm studying at the moment um, a document that uh, that Bob Proctor had shared with me, which is about um, the law of least effort. Yeah, and that really links to this, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, that's that kind of connecting with what, yeah, and building up or building on, which you know you were talking yeah. about building on what you're already good at, right? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. So um, it sounds like you've had quite a journey to where you are right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah. And I didn't know that your day job was a social worker. Um, Is that something you still do as well now? I do, but I'm looking to come out of it. So long story short, I feel I can better help people in other ways that Mm -hmm. kind of not only help them more, but are also less taxing on me because as you can imagine, so Mm. I work with adults in social work, but some, it can be a really challenging and difficult, kind of the emotional drain that it can be at times. Mm. And I just think there's better ways that I can help people, which I didn't know about when I went into social work. I didn't know I had these other skills. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about kind of what I, where I can best help people and kind of help more people in a shorter amount of time. That's the thing, isn't it? Because you knew yeah. you were talking about this ripple effect and that there's a lady that I follow and she talks about a tidal wave of yeah. impact, right? So, and, and also I suppose that links back to that law of least, e least effort that yeah. I was just talking about, you know, al allowing our things to be easy yeah. and knowing that we are worthy to receive yeah. in from doing what we love and from things flowing and, and being easy you know yeah. um yeah yeah I, I yeah I, I love that and you know when it comes to legacy it's this aspect of having this this impact if you want to have a big impact on the world if you want yeah. to touch many lives um, it makes sense to do it in the way that you feel is going to yeah. reach the most people. Yeah, that's the thing. And I think mm. because I've got a number of chronic conditions, for me, it's about what I can do feasibly yeah. in, in a set day and mm -hmm. not be then written off the following day because of the amount of effort one day has taken. Yeah. And I just feel there's, there's so many better ways that I can support other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, would you mind sharing... Um, what the the conditions are that that you struggle with so yeah. it might be people who yeah. also yeah no worries so uh, well i'll give you a little brief background so up until 2013 i'd spent 10 years in a domestic abuse relationship that was mm -hmm. quite harrowing and then eventually got out of that to move away moved away with the children and then over the space of four years i was diagnosed with six different chronic conditions wow so some of it I do think is from living that constantly in fight or flight mode and I'm doing a lot of research in it. So I've got one of them is fibromyalgia mm -hmm. and there's a lot of papers and documents out there now about the links between kind of trauma and living in an extensive trauma thing and then people going on to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia as well that, as that. I mean, that, that's so interesting. I, before yeah. you move on and I'm really interested in everything you've got to say because you're this is this is so interesting and um, but that thing of environment and being in that state of of trauma um because i i know a few people who suffer with fibromyalgia including my mom actually and um you know that that connection between our environment and what's going on and and you know obviously you were in a, yeah. a state a place where there was trauma happening yeah. over and over you know um over a period of time um so the importance of taking care of that piece yeah. you know getting out of that situation which um uh and i and i just wonder if there's anybody listening who is who is in that place right now yeah. what advice would you give to them to help them get out of that situation is is you know is there one piece of, of advice that you could give i think i think the, the best piece of advice and it was a, a statement that somebody said to me and i was just like wow that is incredible and it, mm. she said that what people need to realize is that your worst day after you get out of that situation will mm -hmm. always be better than your best day whilst you're in that situation and I think too easily people that have not lived through it or not experienced it don't realise kind of how hard it is to get out of that situation. And mm. I hear people say at least, because I do a lot of clubhouse rooms about domestic abuse things, and you hear people saying quite often, well, why don't people just leave? And I'm like, mm. really, the amount of people in that situation, if it were as simple as just yeah. leave, yeah. extensive domestic abuse would not happen. And there's so many things that play a part on that, like thinking you have to stay in that situation, your self-esteem, your self-worth, mindset, everything. Yeah. Just, it's completely shot. And if you don't feel you've got anything of value and you're not worth anything, mm. you don't see a reason to get out of that situation. So I think it's just really important that people that are in that situation know that things do get better. There are so many resources out there. They're not always easy to tap into. Refuge is usually a really good place to start because they can sign pushes to local support networks and ways that you can get help. 
But mm. I think it's about knowing that there is help out there. And if you're not in that situation, but you know that somebody is, mm. the best thing you can do is listen to them, but don't push them to leave because until they're ready to leave, they won't leave. And even if they do, and it's been historically proven, they, they leave, they go back, they leave, they go back. Mm -hmm. So the more, more you push, it actually has kind of a more damaging effect than you supporting them to make that decision because when you're in that situation until you are ready to leave and have the support network to enable you afterwards yeah because it's really strange when you leave and I've spoken to a few people about this because at the time I had no understanding of it at all when I was in that situation mm. but when we separated even though I'd known for years I wanted to separate I then had this huge feeling of loss I was really lucky that I was at university at the time as a mature student and we had a lecture about death, loss and bereavement. Mm -hmm. And a part of that module on loss was about the loss of relationships. And there was other things like when you lose a job or when you lose your sense of identity, when children leave home and things. Yeah. But that sense of loss when you leave really is it's horrific. It's really overwhelming and it's really hard to deal with because you, you know you don't want to be back in that situation. Mm. but when your body's feeling this loss and this grief it's mm -hmm. really weird to try and think what am I grieving I don't want that person I don't want that situation mm. yeah I'm still going through all them kind of emotions of loss and grief so I think it's just about realizing there is support out there and do reach out people I don't think people realize how much support there is and there does need to be a lot more work done about making sure people know how to access that support Mm. But yeah definitely reach out and kind of don't hold it in yourself and know that you're not alone there are unfortunately so many other people going through exactly the same and it's only been exasperated by lockdown yeah yeah I mean it, this this is the thing with yeah, um I mean I've I know quite a few people whose relationships have split up yeah. you know over the last year you know, we've all been in this situation where we're been flung together yeah. and there's no escape. I mean, oh my gosh, the normal things that would have been in yeah. place to get out and get get a get away and, and have some space and just hasn't been there for anybody, has it? So no, it's, that's the thing, even for people in a loving, happy yeah. relationship, spending a year yeah. locked in the house effectively with that person. It's hard work. And I, I've said a number of times, I'll tell you what, I love these kids. I said, but they are getting right on my nerves now. They really need to go back to school. And the same with the other half. I, yeah. A couple of times I said, you know what, I'm buying a tent. We actually did buy a tent in lockdown and the kids went and slept in it in the garden just for something to do. Yeah. But I kept yeah. saying to the other half, I said, you're going to live in the tent if you carry on getting under my feet. <laughs> Yeah. We're just not designed, are we, to live in no. a literally like a contained unit with no outside influence? No, I mean, you know, there is that saying it takes a village that I'm sure we've all heard so many, yeah. so many times, right, to, to raise a family. But, you know, we life is easier in community. Yeah. Life is easier, you know, and this notion that one person could fill all our needs or yeah. us fill all of somebody else's needs is ridiculous that's it's never going to happen so you know we need our friends we need our extended families we need our community we need all of these you know different people don't we in our lives <laughs> yeah outside of my day job I used to spend the vast majority of my time at home so when we first went into lockdown I was like this is going to be dead easy I thought I've been practicing for this for years and then Obviously, while it was summer and everything was fine, then as we got to winter, I think it just really hit people, didn't it? And it was mm -hmm. it was hard for the strongest people that didn't want to be going out rather than compare that to the people that were used to having kind of an active and out and about lifestyle. It, yeah. It's just been tough. And I think it's just made things quite difficult for people. Mm. Luckily, at least we're now out of that and on the rise again as they say yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so coming back to because I, I kind of wanted to just take you down that thread yeah. um around um uh, yeah around your 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 past situation partly because I thought well do you know what I think there's always so much learning isn't there yeah. 
from those experiences and I, I know that's something that that you do share so um so I, I interjected at this place where you were talking about how you had you've been looking at research around yep. um some of the con conditions you have like fibromyalgia yep. and you were starting to share a little bit about you the health side of things and and yep. what you're doing to support your health yep and other people with theirs so if you want to just share a yeah. bit about that yeah so as well as fibromyalgia I've also got Crohn's disease which is probably the worst of what I've got so for me experience wise so mm. yeah, Crohn's disease fibromyalgia rheumatoid arthritis anxiety depression and chronic fatigue although I do think anybody with all of the others they're bound to have chronic fatigue absolutely yeah Almost all of them come with a side effect of tiredness and fatigue. So it yeah. was obvious once you've got it five times, you're going to be a bit chronically. Mm -hmm. As I said, by two, the summer of 2018 was when it was at its worst. So my Crohn's was in a constant flare. They'd increased my medications. And what I'd lit, I didn't realise it again at the time, but what I realised afterwards was how they impact on each other. So as my right. Crohn's flares up, and as I get stressed, that then triggers the anxiety, which then makes me want to go out less. So then mm -hmm. that flares up the depression because I'm not communicating with people. Mm -hmm. The fibro then thinks it'll have a little party and everything will ache, which then makes the rheumatoid arthritis trigger off. And my hands, they don't do it so much now, but my fingers used to swell to the point where I couldn't actually bend them. Mm -hmm. So they gave me wrist splints and gloves and chucked no end of medication at me like at my worst point I was on 37 tablets a day and I was like this is horrific so I was only in my early 30s yeah and I was like taking more tablets per day than I was years old and I don't know I just kept thinking there's got to be more to life than this yeah but I wasn't doing anything to try and find a way to help myself I literally I just turned into a kind of a social recluse laid on the sofa and then it got to the point where I would barely move I'd get up to go to the bathroom to make a coffee and then I'd go back to living on the sofa mm. and it sounds bad but at that point I didn't even go to bed I probably wasn't showering as often as I should everything just kind of got waylaid mm -hmm. I'd get the shopping delivered to the house did what I needed to do for the kids gave up and that was it. I was really lucky that then I found a product that helped me that I absolutely was dead against. I was convinced it was a scam. I was convinced it was another fad. And I was like, no way. I've heard it all before. Look mm -hmm. for me. Again, I didn't think it was lucky at the time. The lady was quite persistent in me trying it. And I was like, really not interested. Get out of my inbox. So in mm -hmm. the end, she sent me to try it. But obviously, as I came out of that, the very darkest point and it was helping me with my health conditions which again I didn't believe it would so mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time looking into the ingredients and up until then I'd been very much of the opinion that if you get poorly you go to the doctors you get a tablet and that fixes it mm -hmm. obviously I then learned hang on I go to the doctors I get a tablet it slightly eases it but it's now giving me a different side effect so I'd go back to the doctors and get a tablet to counteract that side effects, which would give me a different one, which is how it ended up on so many. Yeah, yeah. Plus, there'd been an oversight by between the GP and the different um, professionals that were involved. There'd been a massive oversight that they put me on heavy anti-inflammatories for my back, but nobody had actually thought as far as actually the anti-inflammatories are triggering the Crohn's. Right, yeah, yeah, but of course. I was taking it's all meditation. Connected. Yeah, and I'm taking these every time my back started aching, I'd take another two of the anti inflammatories, and then I was like, now my crunch is flaring up. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And it was only by chance that somebody said to me, How are you supposed to take them if you've got Crohn's? I was like, Well, the doctors have given me them. She's like, I don't think you should. So I rang the Crohn's clinic and I was like, Should I ever take them? No, not really. But as they say, every time you go to the doctors in the hospital and they say, bring your medications with you, I'd mm. always taken them with me. So it had been an oversight. And I was like, OK, it happened. So I cut them out, which made my back pain flare up, which again, mm. that's triggering everything. And I was like, this is a no-win situation. Whichever of the tablets I take out of this, the equation, something gets worse. Yeah. So for me, getting that little bit of relief led to me realising that there is more to, and to look into kind of how natural ingredients can help your body because you find with natural ingredients you don't have them other side effects and mm. I was like I need to find a lot of natural things mm -hmm. that can get me off these medications because some of them I was on quite heavy end painkillers which yeah. meant I couldn't drive when I'd taken them and I'm like 
my job means I need to drive. I was like, do I drive to work, then take them, um, then I can't leave the office for at least a couple of hours. So if I've got to do a visit, I'm sat waiting for the effects to wear off. Mm. Or do I go without them, um, but then I'm in that much pain that I can't effectively do my job properly anyway. So I was like, this really is a no-win. So I was really lucky that I found a product that helped, that led to me then looking more into it. But I do think there's, I don't know, I always say it, I was really lucky to find her. She always says it was fate that she found me. Mm-hmm. Because up until then, she was selling the products to help with weight loss. Right, okay. She originally connected with me because I wanted to lose weight. Right. But the weight loss ended up being a side effect. So I did lose over 80 pounds. Yeah. But for me, that wasn't the biggest part. The biggest part was actually getting my health back to a point where I could actually function as a human being. Because mm. to me, and it probably sounds like an over-exaggeration to listeners, but to me, living with all of them conditions, not being able to go out, I literally felt like I was existing. And had I not have had two young children, I probably wouldn't still be here today because it just got to that point where I thought, what am I living for to get up be in pain all day until I sleep to get up to do exactly the same thing. Mm. So had I not have had the children, I don't think that I would still be around to kind of share my story now. So I do think that, again, it's one of them that if you're in that place, know yeah. that things do get better. I'm not saying my product will help anybody, everybody by any stretch of the imagination, but there are so many alternatives out there that can help people to kind of improve their quality of life somewhat. Yeah. And so it, it, it is, I think that's a great, a great message to share, you know, yeah. that no, no matter where you are, things can get better. Yeah. You know, that there, there is a way and, and it's, it's, you know, as, as a coach, one of the things I encourage people to do is start asking good questions. Yeah. You know, so if you ask um, you know, if you, you're asking, why am I in so much pain? You'll find lots of answers for why you're in so much pain, right? Yeah. And when we, when we put our focus on that, we get more of what we focus yeah. on. And, um, you know, when we ask, like, to find the answers, like, yeah. what natural products could help me is a question yeah. you could replace that with, right? And then you'll start to have the people like yourself come up, like somebody might be listening to this who has asked that question, and then they're listening to this yeah. and getting connected with you, you know, who has some ideas of things that could help them or, yeah. you know, as soon as we start opening up and asking those questions and trying to find how, you know, find yeah. w- what might help us, then we start to find the answers. And I, and I, I always feel that's that almost feels like magic, you know. Yeah, it does. That's what I say. And I literally call one of the products that I found with magic coffee. And everybody's like, it's not magic. I'm like, no. If you see where I was and yeah. where I am, it's magic. Yeah. Like, if we don't go out making medical claims. And I always say, look, I'm not making a medical claim here, but I can show you exactly how it, it's completely changed my life and because I shared it all in my group people mm. followed that journey with me which I think helped a lot because when I started my group I didn't even show my face nobody knew what I looked like my mm-hmm. profile picture was a picture of a piece of wood no idea why but I thought <laughs> that, that was that was perfectly acceptable at that time and literally yeah. I talked about my weight loss and how I was coming off my medication but it was only me kind of it was a bit like a personal blog without mm-hmm. me knowing anything about, I knew nothing about business, knew nothing about blogging. So I just wrote in my group what I was doing, kind of chatting to people. Yeah. And it was only afterwards that I realised how much of a journey I'd been through. And then now when I look back and I'm like, wow, it has been absolutely crazy. But because I did A-level biology, chemistry and psychology, mm-hmm. I was looking for why the product shouldn't work rather than enjoying the fact that they were helping so much. Because I was convinced, I'm like, there's got to be something voodoo in this. I was like, no way does this have this effect. Like, it, it's not scientifically possible. But, mm. And everybody else like, just enjoy it, Ed. And I'm like, no, I need to find out how it's doing it. I need to know for my own sake what it's doing and just how it's working. And lots of people are like that, aren't they? You know, yeah. lots of people want to know how and why and... Um, uh, 
you know, and that's fair enough. And it sounds like you will have some of those answers, right? <laughs> because, yeah. it, you know, you, I have to you've for looked my own, into that. Yeah, for my own kind of peace of mind, I had to know kind of how it was working because it didn't make sense because you can imagine how big 37 tablets are if you put them all in one pile. And I'm yeah. thinking, this makes no sense. This is 37 pills. Yeah. It's hundred, millions of pounds worth of research must have gone into. Yeah. And I'm like, and this is one tablet with natural ingredients in. I'm like, this does not add up. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it is, um, I'm, I'm reading a book at the moment written by a chiropractor and, you know, she really talks about, um, because a lot of people think of chiropractic yeah. health as back pain, right? Yeah. But it is about the whole body. It's about yeah. the whole body system. And, you know, when we give our body the, the environment and the ingredients that yeah. it needs to heal, it, it does an amazing job, you know? Our bodies are really clever in that way. Yeah. Um, uh, but I suppose it, it takes a bit of understanding that, yeah. you know, to support our bodies do what they're designed to do. Yeah, you need to put the right stuff. It's like when you get a car, you wouldn't dream of abusing a car the mm -hmm. way we actually abuse our own bodies. Yeah. You wouldn't get a Lamborghini and then think, oh, well, I'll put red diesel in it. You would put the best fuel in it. But yeah. for some reason with our bodies, we just use and abuse it for 80, 90, 100 years, but then expect it to kind of serve us. I think yeah. when I started looking at it like that, I was like, you know what, actually, there is so much to be said. And when you look at diets and things now and the amount of stuff that we put into food and the amount of rubbish that's put into preserve it, mm. our body has no chance, really, the amount of damage that we are doing to it, I think. And yeah, yeah. So coming back to this sense of legacy. Yeah. And the you know the impact that yeah. you're wanting to have and you feel you are having and that that's why you know you're wanting to go towards yeah. more more towards supporting people yeah. um through this business that you have um what what's your vision then for for, so for the impact you want to have so for me it started quite small initially it was like i'll share my story and see if other people want that help Mm -hmm. So I did that for some time and like a couple of people had joined, a couple of people had signed up and it started quite small with me just helping in little ways. So it, literally it was each time I spoke to them, I was like, can I help this person to have a better quality of life? Mm. So quite early I switched my mindset, I think, from instead of going out there to try and sell a product, I went out there to serve and try and support people and help people. So that's what it was about initially. Mm. But then I saw the bigger picture and thought, well, if I help 10 people and they go on to help 10 people each and then they go on to help 10 people each, I was like, this could actually be huge. And mm -hmm. through the time that I was quite unwell in 2018, I joined lots of Facebook groups about the different conditions that I had. Wow. But I found that a lot of them were quite negative. So it was people that kind of lived with that condition for some time, were pretty set in, look, this is what my life is like now. It's, it's always going to be like this. I've just settled for the fact I'm not really going to have a quality of life. So initially I thought I could help them people, but rapidly learned that until people are wanting that help or until they're looking for something, mm -hmm. it wasn't really something I could do. So now I talk more about my story mm -hmm. and what I've been through and how I've got through it, mm -hmm. kind of connect with people on that way. And then because I was doing it as a business and then some people wanted to join the business to share it themselves, mm -hmm. I then realised I had another skill set in helping people to kind of grow their business organically. So I then I co-run a group on Facebook where we support small business owners. And that, again, is the same sort of thing we've been through it about being yourself, not being ashamed of who you are, showing up each day, being consistent, and mm -hmm. then them people going out to help other people through their business or through, there's lots of coaches and things in there. Yeah. So it's all about kind of me giving people the skills, the tools, or the products for them to be able to help someone else with the skills, the tools, or the product. Mm -hmm. So my big vision is to help in two different ways. So mm -hmm. through my own business, it's to help as many people as possible to see that they can have an improved quality of life. Mm 
Yeah. If they're wanting to lose weight, they can lose weight. If they're wanting to improve their health conditions, they can. Or in the other aspect of it, it's about helping people to grow their business to know that by showing up and being yourself rather than hiding mm. behind a business or a logo or a brand, mm. you can actually build that know, like, trust and kind of grow your own business that way. And you don't need to be out there hiding behind whatever it is that you're trying to sell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's kind of similar to myself, you know, with the business people yeah. that I work with, I do a similar thing. And with the, and uh, my other passion is the parenting, you yeah. know, and supporting people to be able to parent in the way that they want to in, in a respectful way and um, know that that's possible, yeah. um, you know, and have that freedom with their family and, and create that legacy within their family, you know, yeah. from a, a business point of view, a financial freedom point of view, but also a family dynamics point of yeah, view, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, so it sounds great what the way that you're, you know, the vision that you have yeah. for supporting in those in those two areas. So, um, I mean, both of us, uh, you know, could talk for England, I think, yeah. or Scotland, <laughs> which is where oh. I am, <laughs> both for the UK. Um, but, uh, you know, it's probably time to start wrapping up our conversation. And yeah. um, so just to let people know that um uh i will pop um your links underneath yeah. this so if anybody is listening and you want to connect with ed you'll have her, the links to um her group and uh, you know her social media and website and things so that you can connect with her yeah. if you're wanting to find out more about how she can support you so Thank you so much for coming today and sharing with us all here and, you know, sharing this beautiful ripple effect legacy that you are creating. Uh, I just think it's great. Thank you so much. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. You're very welcome. Amazing to have you on. Okay.